Right, so now we've got the engine bell sorted nice and tidy. It's uh, time to turn the attention to the bodywork. Um, the car's got to go through an MOT, so we've got to do a, a few structural issues. So this is the first one, and uh, what a terrible state. Uh, this car had been restored around 10 years ago by a body shop. And I can tell you this rust is more than 10 years old. And I can tell you that because when we've been digging around and removing metal or what's left of the metal, you've been finding thick bits of filler that have been put over the top of rust, you can see here. And, uh, you know, lumps of uh, filler and rust. Now you think that ain't that bad if it's for bodywork, but this is for chassis. Now look at that, that is a man for the anti-roll bar. You can clearly see there's five mil of filler. I, can't, I cannot believe the bodge that someone has done. This is a professional body shop, and I've seen reviews on Facebook how great they are. Um, not gonna mention any names, but what a dreadful state, look at that. So they've literally fillered over the top of rust and not even uh, cared about the consequences of having your chassis uh, completely strengthened by filler. All right, so move on to the inside. So I've uh, cut out some uh, bit of the floor pan already. What we've done, we've ordered some uh, panels for both floor pans. I've cut out some of the rot already. You're gonna cut all this slot out, so we're gonna have nice, fresh, clean metal. And another part of the body shop, done the same thing up here. So I've just dug out here. This is seam sealer. Now, this hole has been filled with seam sealer by the body shop. So instead of cutting out the metal, Right, so after a lot of chopping to the floor pan, I've stripped back all the um, sealer from the old repairs just to see what I'm dealing with and you can see the state of it. Um, the person who welded this just could not weld. I mean, look at them welds, they're not even structural. They're not sticking the welds together at all. I mean, look along the seam here. That's a weld. Let's get that. So that was welded and uh, you just see how easy I pulled it off. So. This was a body shop that done this. And if you think this is unusual, this is not. All the RSs out there are like this. I don't care if they're 15 grand or 30 grand, they're all like this. Yeah, so check this out. So I've obviously cut out all that crappy welding. You can see where they've welded over the top of rust. Obviously there's the weld and there's the metal. So if you see here, you can uh, see the brand new panel. Obviously that's how they come pressed and it's just a terrible fit. So it takes a, a lot, a lot of work to get it to be flat and to fit perfectly like that. So you can see the difference between the two panels. You can see the left side looks like factory and the right side, as you can see, is not very good. So uh, little things like um, I've had to reverse the flange and uh, stretch the metal against the seal. Uh, you can see how it comes here. The opposite way. Um, and then I've had to shape obviously the section that goes on the bulkhead flatten all this section out and it's been uh, butt welded so I've done some spot weld holes and they're gonna go all the way along it. Two inches along like the factory. You can see that's gonna look a lot better than the uh, state they come in when you buy them. So you can see how much material I've had to remove out the uh, floors and I've had to replace the uh, inner seal as well. Nice strengthened bit so we can jack it up off it. The chassis legs have been repaired. You can see the lip up there, I made a new lip up for it. So uh, obviously I'm gonna plug weld it from underneath. Right, so we've got all the floor pan in. You can see I've uh, shaped it and when uh, when it's all painted and everything, you won't even notice going down the welds. Nice strong floor pan, get rid of all that nasty rust that was in there. So that other side isn't as bad, but it looks that way at the minute. But uh, obviously when we start cutting metal out of it, I'll probably find more rust. So I just made up a nice little uh, section of metal. Gonna tack that in there, and then gonna make the uh, panel that joins to the floor pan, and then we should be complete on this side. Right, so this floor pan's all tacked in place now. Just got a little bit more welding to do, and now I've got to start cutting out this side. Um, 
This seal has already been bodged up at one point in the past uh, and you can see it's had repairs, you can see it's been welded underneath which makes the uh, metal rust if you don't protect it so I'm going to start cutting that out now and put this floor pan in as well I'm not going to go as far back because there ain't a lot of rot Right, so most of the uh, rust is cut out this side now uh, I've just treated the underneath panel uh, with some uh, rust protection and I'm just making up a panel now to uh, patch in but you can see here I've just cut out all the rust, looks a lot better already. Uh, I've got to make a couple of patch panels up. I've treated the uh, underneath panel, it was in pretty good condition so I don't need to replace that. I've got a little section here, you can see I, I will weld from underneath and I'll do that under the car instead. What I've just done is I've just knocked up um, a panel and I'm going to butt weld along the bottom and I'm going to spot weld obviously along the bulkhead and uh, I've shaped it so it sits in there nicely like that. So obviously I'm just going to butt weld it along here, give it a little bit more shaping, spot weld up here, lap joint, and then I can just seam seal it, make a little patch up for this corner. So obviously anyone that's done metal work in the past will know um, how much work goes into shaping these panels. I say just knocked up a panel, but it takes a good cut of hours just to shape up a bit of metal, trim it, fit it, so it fits as nice as that. Right, so I just knocked, knocked this panel up out of one section of metal. You can see it's been shaped and hammered and solid, so it's perfect fit. I didn't want it to be loads of different sections like they had it before and have nasty welds everywhere. Um, and it fits perfectly now, so I'm going to show you where that goes. It joins the inner arch to the floor pan and it gives a bit of strength. Obviously, already, I have um, some light in there. I've repaired that section already that you see was nasty and rusted before. So this one is going to go like that. And you see how nicely that fits. And so that's going to be spot welded along the bottom there to the floor pan. Obviously I've shaped it along there as well. And then obviously I'm going to weld it along that section there, join it to the chassis leg. And that'd be nice and strong. Right, so yesterday I managed to get some etch prime on the floor all the welding done um, what I've done is I've let that dry overnight and I've just went around it with a seam sealer done all the joins all the weld spots so that would be uh, nice and protected you can see how nicely the floor pans come out like a factory that's how they should have done it from the start so we're gonna uh, go around the inside now you can see how that blends in now with the inner wing how much better that looks than the chopped and cut up panels that he had in there before all the rust has gone out of there so I'm going to uh, seam seal the inside now and then I'm going to paint underneath with um, some of that U-Pole stone chip. The seam sealer I've used there is U-Pole as well. Um, I like to use their stuff, it's top quality stuff. And um, yeah, so I'm going to go over it with a stone chip, the stuff I used on my GSI. And then we'll be able to paint it with some white, diamond white paint. Right, so I'm going to use some of this stone chip now, the U-Pole stuff that I used before. I'm just going to use a roller to put it on this time though, not, not a spray gun. Comes out nice and thick. You can see it's very gloopy, dries very quickly as well. Overpaint it very quickly. See what it looks like. So I'm going to get that on now, get it on the roller and uh, protect the underneath of the floor pan. So that's it, I've put one thick coating of the stone chip on. I always put it on a wall roller instead of the um, foam rollers because it, it creates a nice texture the same sort of texture as the original finish so the body still coming um, you can see that's going to protect it for a long time and this uh, stone chip really dries off quickly so you can paint over it very quickly and get nice protection in no surface rust uh, you see how look good that looks now so that's all dry now and uh, I'm pretty happy with how that's come out it's uh, much more strength back in that floor pan and that should last for a lot of years to come also I'm very happy with putting that extra steel section in on the inner seal and that's going to allow us to be able to jack this up here without it all crushing in like the factory ones do and damaging the seal. Right, so I just went over the inside, same thing, same seal all the way around. Um, this floor pan was the one that I had to literally cut out all the way down to the chassis leg uh, and I had to replace it in the seal as well. You see how nice that's come out. Um, obviously I'm going to go over the floor pans with a, a diamond white Get rid of any of the surface rust, see a bit of surface rust up on the bulkhead. Uh, little panel section up the back bulkhead there I'm going to make up as well. That'll be in the next video. While I'm here, 
want you to uh, see if anyone out there has got a 90 spec rear spoiler. Desperately looking for one. It has to be an RS Turbo one because the uh, XR3 eyes, they've got rubber ones, which is, uh, they're no good. Um, uh, so we, this is an 88 spec, obviously, and I uh, want to change it to a 90 spec spoiler. We've got a 90 spec bumper for it now as well. So it's a 90 spec bumper. It's not the best bumper in the world. I think uh, it's got a few cracks in it along the bottom where people can't help but hit speed umps. Um, you can see the difference between the 90 spec and the 88 spec. This is the 88 spec. We've obviously chopped this one right out for uh, the intercooler. Uh, if you see them side by side, the 90 spec is a far better design. It's got the uh, vents there for the brake ducts. Um, obviously, when they painted this bumper, they didn't even bother to take the strips out. When you do it, take the strips out and you can put new strips back in. So while we're here, another thing we're looking for, this exhaust system is a, a magnet exhaust system and the oval back box with a four inch inwardly rolled tip. We're after a mongoose exhaust system or just the back box itself with the four inch outwardly rolled tip, uh, the classic shape. It looks a lot better. So if you've got one, drop me a message and we'll buy it. So if you're wondering why I haven't repaired this chassis leg yet, basically it's because we are running a Cosworth system on here with an extended bottom pulley for the trigger ring. And as you can see here, it sits way too close to the chassis leg. And I can't get in there, I can't do any welding or anything while that engine is in there. I can't drop it down, I can't move it. So we've just picked up, luckily, a Quaife gearbox for the car to take the power that we need with shot peen gears, ATB diff, all sorts of uh, goodies on that. And we've also picked up a uh, touring car spec Quaife quick rack that they used on the S1s. So we're gonna fit that, we're gonna pull out the engine so I can get in there and do a proper repair on the chassis. And uh, we're gonna put some poly bushes also. I've also picked up a T34 turbo for the car. So we're gonna get in there, we're gonna modify the dam pipe because at the minute it's got a mongoose and it's got this elbow on there. Obviously with the Cosi setup, they don't have this elbow, it comes straight off the exhaust housing. So we're gonna make up a nice dam pipe for it as well. So I'm gonna try and upload a little bit more, a little bit more regularly. I've been slacking with the uploads, just been trying to crack on with work. But I'm gonna get some more videos up for you guys. And if you're enjoying the series or enjoying the rest of the videos, make sure you like them, drop subscribe, and I'll see you on the next episode.